Okay, so we're going to look at the Ocean Wave Sock now, uh, which is a really handy tool if you're wanting more specific or almost art directable hero waves to hit at a specific time. Uh, so if I place the Ocean Wave Sock down and we do our evaluate uh, normal node just to be safe. So straight away you'll see that nothing happens. Um, I'm going to change my frame range just to start at 1 and go to 121 just for now. You'll see in a second why. So this wave node works very similar to a spectrum node. If I middle click, you'll see that we have those four volumes that have our deformation information in there. Um, but straight away, there's nothing happening. So right at the top, number of waves you'll see is disabled. If I turn that on, we get a wave, which is perfect. And if I scrub the timeline, that moves accordingly. So the first parameter is number of waves, and that's very obvious. It's how many waves do you want? If I get to two, three, four, etc., we get more and more waves. This is useful if you want maybe one or two larger waves to hit at specific times. If you're wanting like a really consistent and almost repeating large wave layer, I would probably recommend trying to achieve that with an ocean spectrum layer. Isolate the specific frequencies and just kind of have that. Uh, with the ocean waves, you're kind of limited by the fact that you have to determine how many waves you want. So if you, you know, you've got a long frame range or I don't know, they're they're quite small, but they're repeating loads. So you're going to have to really dial this in quite a lot. So I would probably avoid doing that this way, but the option's there if you want. So I'm going to just reduce that to three just for demonstration purposes. Points per wave is basically how many points along each wave do you want me to sort of scatter? If I reduce this, you'll see that we get really like blocky uh, shapes and it's not really that great. Uh, I like to think of it almost as a resample resolution uh, the more we have the higher sample it is um, but if you go too high then you get this kind of self overlapping uh, self stacking waves um, almost as if we are instancing too many points onto the same with the larger radius so it's uh, putting the waves on top of each other and that's why you get this weird like uh, horrible ridge um, but some of the parameters later down the line will also coincide with that so I'll demonstrate that in a short while. The size is kind of just the, the size of the wave, like lengthwise. Uh, if I reduce this, you'll see that it kind of shrinks and becomes a bit more stubby. Uh, if I reduce the points per wave as well, you'll see that uh, we get rid of that kind of stacking. This is useful if like you want a big wave, but you don't want it to stretch really far across the screen. Um, it's just a little bit more control for the sort of the use case that you want. Separation is just the space between each wave. Uh, this is probably quite a useful a parameter if I reduce this they actually get close together uh, further away they get further apart um, which is good if you try to time your waves or you don't want them to be super uh, like frequent that's a handy parameter to have so direction is exactly what it says on the tin it's just the direction as with the ocean spectrum direction due to seed is just a randomize on the seed uh, you might not notice much happen um, but due to scale is is also a randomization on the scale. If I go really high, you'll see it kind of warps it all together. Uh, it's probably not good to go that high, but quite high maybe will give a bit more of a natural feeling, so it's not super, super uh, like straight and consistent. Now there's two animation types. There's center and wave speed. We'll start with center. Uh, if I play, you'll see that nothing happens. There's no movement. Uh, that's because you can actually keyframe this uh, if you choose to maybe just on one axis as opposed to going diagonally but uh, you can have a bit more control if you want to animate it yourself um, I prefer wave speed because you can set the speed and it will move at that speed if I reduce it or something really low you'll see that it barely moves at all um, kind of just almost like a time scale I would describe that as an offset is just an offset on whereabouts that's sort of spawning based on the time so why I started at frame one is because it's kind of spawns the map frame one and you'll see them Whereas if I go to something more familiar in production with, I don't know, 1001, you'll see that there's nothing there, although we did create our three waves. So this is where you would have to adjust this offset to probably between four and 500 in the negative. Yep, yeah, around about there. Um, so I guess an option would be you could either set your offset early on and then tweak your waves to your actual frame range or temporarily go to frame one, set your waves up once you're happy with them come to your correct frame range and just adjust this offset until you see them where you should. Uh, the choice is yours. Um, that's just something I like to do in that order. So that's kind of the gist of the actual wave 
uh, creation in terms of where and how big uh, parameters here at the top. And before we go on to sort of the shape controls, I'm just going to show you that you can actually merge this in now with a normal motion spectrum. So if I just very quickly set our spectrum up, something really simple. Yeah, that'll do. So we can actually add this wave to the spectrum layer and you'll see that we get an underlying large waves. So hopefully that straight away indicates what you can kind of do with this. You can have your standard ocean with uh, that you're happy with that you've spent time on and you 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 greenlit and then you you know your super might be like okay can we have one big wave at this time? You can just use something like the ocean wave sop, make that wave, add that in and maintain everything else you did before. So that's really handy. Uh, I just thought I'd show you that before we actually go into some of these uh, parameters because you'll notice they're very similar to the wave instancing uh, parameters over here. So if I reset that like that, you'll see at the top we have crest width, which is again what it says. It's the width of the crest at the top. If I reduce it, we get a almost more attenuated um, shape. I'm just going to reduce the adjust scale back to zero so we get a clear view of what's happening. Uh, if I go too high, it almost kind of smooths it out and they become really large and like mounded as opposed to quite crispy. Again, dial that into what kind of shape you might want. I'm just going to reset that to default. Chop is very, it's like chop from the ocean spectrum. It's just the crispiness almost of the cusp. If I go really high, you'll see it's, it sharpens that. Um, but if I go too high, it does the self overlap, uh, weird ridge thing. So again, like a lot of these parameters, you kind of have to dial them in um, find a good balance uh, but chop is very simple in terms of that radius is kind of well it's basically instancing so it works the same way as, as the wave instancing radius if I reduce this quite a heavy amount you'll see that we start to see the individual points uh, and if I that correlates with the eight points per wave so if I reduce that you'll see we have three points here and we've got three here and if I reduce uh, sorry the radius you'll see there are our points. So think of it as this is just setting up a scatter for you, but with really long waves. Um, and you can adjust the radius, points per wave, etc., size in correlation to that. Again, just be careful because if you go too high, it will basically stack the waves on top of each other and you'll get this horrible overlap. So it's something to just keep in mind. Uh, so I'm just going to set that to default for now. Now you'll notice we have the variance. Uh, options here as well similar to the instancing it's just a random amount to vary that by um, kind of self-explanatory so you can have a play around with that rotation again is just the what rotation you want um, similar to the direction and amplitude is just the, the amplitude and we can have a random amount per wave obviously that's silly but it demonstrates what it's doing shape seed is just the seed of it uh, so if you don't like a specific uh, sort of noise pattern you can just change that up if you'd like and then we have compute velocity at the bottom which you can just obviously compute the velocity uh, I probably won't touch this unless you're working with sort of specific shutters um, but the options there if you need it so that is kind of the summary of the ocean waves so we can combine that now with our main spectrum that you created and you can hopefully sort of be a bit familiar and sort of to see how this can be quite useful in terms of uh, crafting a specific shot especially if you're going to pump this into like a guided simulation or something like that um, by having that control of big waves is really useful.